Hey guys, welcome back to my Etsy TV. And today, I will be working again on another palette project. But this time, I will be showing you how to create a nice floating shelf. As you can see just right here, for your bedroom, or even your living room. And this project is going to be a little bit cooler than the others. Because I will be using some industrial pipes behind. Which will give the shelf some floating effect. And after that, I will be adding some storage compartment. Where you can put some phones, small tablets, or even a bottle of wine. <laughs> you know what? Last time I was mentioning a project from Zachary, one of the other designers in Canada, and also a member of our community. And one of his latest projects was a DIY lamp. And I was trying to picture this lamp on my shelf. And look at the result. Pretty cool, huh? I will be adding a link of his project just above here, where you can check it if you like. And as I was telling you last time, there is so many cool stuff we can create out of palette wood. I will try once in a while to share some of those ideas with you, but remember, I'm not the only one from the community sharing cool stuff made out of recycled materials. And we have a lot of members showing you how to create simple things that may take only a few minutes to make. And the fact that our platform is multilingual gives you the opportunity to see what is being made all around the world. Like here in France with Latelier Senevol, recycling a few slots to create a nice photo display. Whoa, this is cool, huh? Alright, and all those ideas for you, available on the ATC app, check them out! Alright, enough talking, now let's jump into it! So here is the palette we're gonna work with today. So the first thing I will do is to turn it upside down, stabilize everything with my clamps, to start the cutting. To make the cut, I will be here using my precision laser jigsaw. And now that we have the piece separated from the main frame, we're gonna start working on it. As it's much easier for me to work on, I've decided to use here my Mitoso style. So what I'm gonna do now is actually put together all the other slats that I previously removed from the main frame and start removing the nails using my hammer. As you can imagine, this is actually a painful process because it can actually break the wood, it can break inside the wood and it can be very very long to remove. But at the end, I can ensure you, you will be very very glad you remove all of them. So just make sure you remove all of them. Then now, I will be removing the upper slot. And note that removing the upper slot will help me to make a cut to the small piece of wood placed between the blocks and the upper slot. And as you can see, I'm trying to remove the piece of wood very carefully to avoid breaking it apart. And here we are. So now, it's time to remove the nails. So now I will be using my metallic 90 degree angle to trace a line and make a cut to reach the same thickness that the block itself. So now I'm slightly turning the frame in order to use my plunge saw to make the cut all along. So now we're going to move to my favorite workbench in order to work on it. And I already know that a lot of you like it. So it will be a very good opportunity for you to look how you can use it. And now I'm going to attach the frame on top of it in order to start doing some sanding. And for this type of project, especially using palette, I will advise you to sand as much as possible. And 
And one of the best part I have to say was to sand the corners. And I have to be honest, one of the best part of the sanding was to do it on the blocks. Oh yeah, smooth like my skin. <laughs> so now that everything is cut and well sanded, time to put the upper slat on top. And here, I will be as usual using my nail gun. I don't know if you saw the trick here, but as the tube I was using for my nail gun didn't have enough pressure, I had to move from the blue one to the white one. Then after that, using my chamfer bit to round up a little bit the edges, So when I was done with the router, I've decided to use some sandpaper to remove all the excess and make the wood as smooth as possible in order to start painting. Then a little bit of air pressure to remove the dust and here we are. Please note that I will be using here some leftover from a white wall paint that I found in my workshop and when I'm done with it, I will be spraying everything with some transparent lacquer. In order to create the doors and the back side, I will be here using two boards that I have from the main frame and flatter them as much as possible to have the same thickness with my planner. Then also flatter the side using my router. Please note that I could have used my meter saw or even my plunge saw or even the jigsaw but I wanted to show you another way for you to use the router just to flatter the side then using my chisel after that to remove all the excess on the edges and one more time using my chamfer bit to round up a little bit the edges so they have the same pattern And here, I love the fact that I've made this multifunctional workbench. You can do so many things with it. So many things. Like now, moving it into the normal workbench position in order to work the wood and burn it out. And now, I guess that you all know how much I like the wood burning effect. <laughs> so I will be applying this effect in order to highlight a rustic atmosphere in the room. Then once again sanding with some sandpaper before applying some simple rustic finish lacquer and all this should highlight even more the wood burning effect. As you can just see here. Okay, so now time to move to the measurements for the industrial pipes. And at the same time, 
looking at some placement. As the pipes was measuring 25 cm long, I've decided here to just cut it in half and to see if it fits with the design. Here, to make this cut, I've decided to use my multifunctional saw, which is very handy for a small shop by the way. I will even advise you to get one of those. And if needed, I will be adding in the forum article for you some links so you know where to buy it. Easy, fast and effective. So now, time to move and create the two doors. And I will be here tracing a line which will allow me to make a cut using my plunge saw and have the exact dimension of the palette. And as you can see, it's a very repetitive job. Now, I'm gonna use again my router on my workbench, workbench table. Then bring back the shelf with the board to start tracing some straight line to get some angles to give those doors some nice design. And now that the doors are ready, it was time for me to find the right placement in order to start adding the hinges. But before that, I will be also applying the wood burning effect to those doors. And to save some time, I will be putting on top of each other the two slats in order to start drilling two holes which will allow me to insert the door handle. I have to say, and to be honest, I didn't imagine that it will fit so well for this design. But I love it a lot. Now, it's time to start fixing the hinges. And as you can see here, I'm using some very small screws. Oh, 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 my mistake. Here, I've placed the inches a little bit too low. So now, I'm gonna take them out the door to put them in the right position. And here we are. Everything closing and opening very well. So now, time to start attaching the back. And to attach the back side, I will be taking the pipes to directly fix them using screws. In order to avoid breaking the wood in that process, I'm here pre-drilling some holes. And here we are, all ready to go and place the shelf in the bedroom.
And here, of course, in order to place the shelf on the wall, I will have to put everything at the right level. And to do so, I will be first attaching the flanges to the wall, which will make it easier for me to attach the shelf after that. Voila, as I was saying earlier, many, many, many ways to recycle and bring back to life some old furniture. And our entire community will keep on sharing wonderful ideas with you, things that you can create for yourself at home and with just a few tools. If you have any questions, feel free to share them via the ATC app, link showing just above here for you. And we also have a mobile application. You can download us on your mobile phone. I will be sharing the link for you in the video description. Basically, you will be seeing exactly what you see on desktop. You will be seeing everything synchronized on your mobile phone. As usual, I hope that you like our weekly project. If it's the case, feel free to share our one minute for another idea of housing videos. And if you are new to the channel, I would like to invite you to subscribe just right here to see every week all the ideas we are sharing with you. One more time, Mr. ATC for another idea of housing. And I'll see you next time. Bye.